On August 29th, Huawei seemingly out of nowhere announced the Mate 60 Pro. The company did not hold any sort of launch event. The device was simply listed on its official website and first-party online store Vimo. This is unlike Huawei, as the telecom giant is known for extravagant events, especially for its premium products. So we reacted quickly and went to the official store to buy the phone in the first three hours. What was even more shocking to learn was that the device was supported 5G connectivity. However, the company makes no mention of 5G support and the name of the chipset found inside the phone, which we all later learned has a title incorporated from Huawei's Kirin chip, the Kirin 9000S. But other than that, there's still very limited information that we can confirm. It has been a week since the phone became official and Huawei has already sold over a million units of the Mate 60 Pro. The smartphone is expected to ship at least 12 million units, and some analysts even expect the figure to approach 40 million. Multiple videos and articles, including ours, regarding the product have emerged in the net over the last few days. Based on the information available and what we found inside, we have compiled this video to answer the key questions about the chip powering the Huawei Mate 60 Pro. Which chip powers the Huawei Mate 60 Pro? Why is so eye-catching? The Huawei Mate 60 Pro houses a high silicon Kirin 9000S chip. It is Huawei's first new mobile chipset in three years. Most importantly, the SoC enables 5G connectivity. Thus, the Mate 60 Pro is also the first Huawei 5G phone in a long time since the limited run Mate 40 series from late 2020. Since 2020, Huawei has been banned from cooperation with almost any chipset suppliers outside of China. The severe restrictions are mainly about Huawei's use of US technology such as software to design and manufacture chipset. But later, Qualcomm first received the US permission to sell 4G mobile chipset to Huawei. So that's the reason why Huawei was always one step behind other brands and without 5G support in releasing phones with the latest chips in the three years. This is certainly a major blow to their phone business. Most industry analysts don't see a good solution for Huawei either, even suggesting that they might end up ditching the phone business. But now Huawei has the Kirin 9000S chipset, a mainstream mobile chipset without those world-famous chip manufacturers involved such as TSMC and Samsung. So who manufactures Huawei Mate 60 Pro's high silicon Kirin 9000S chip? Historically, TSMC manufactured high silicon chipset for Huawei. However, due to US sanctions, the telecom giant could not continue its business with the world's most advanced chip manufacturers. So the new China's manufacturers SMIC, which also has been on the US trade blacklist for three years, took up the challenge. And as a result, China's SMIC produces a new Kirin 9000 SoC for Huawei. Though SMIC is the biggest chip manufacturers in China and the top five largest in the world, its most important source of revenue in 2021 was a focus on a 0.18 micrometers and 55 nanometers processing low-end chip manufacturing. The two accounted for more than half of the gross revenue. Compared with the mobile chips of 7 nanometers and 5 nanometer process for phones chipset that we reviewed a lot, the technical difficulty gap is huge. But as per findings by Tech Insights, the chipset is fabricated on SMIC's 7 nanometers N plus 2 process, which has caught up with the level of mainstream models. The Kirin 9000S measures 107 square millimeters, which makes it 2% larger than the 5 nanometer base of TSMC manufactured Kirin 9000 chip. Interestingly, the latest chipset even has larger critical dimensions than its predecessor, despite being based on a less advanced fabrication process. This is a significant accomplishment for a Chinese chip manufacturer, but for some reason, SMIC has not published papers on its latest innovation in the public space. What is the architecture of the Huawei Mate 60 Pro's high silicon Kirin 9000S chip? Like every other mobile chip on the market, the high silicon Kirin 9000S is ARM-based. But instead of completely relying on the off-the-shelf default ARM cores, Huawei has opted for custom cores like Samsung's Mongoose. The Kirin 9000S features an octa-core CPU. Some benchmarks by reviewers revealed 12 cores since the CPU support hybrid threading up to 12 threads. This makes the Kirin 9000S the first ARM chip on the market to support CPU hybrid threading. Out of the 8 CPU cores, the prime core is the Kosten Tyson core, clocked at 2.62 GHz. Further, the median core are again a cluster of 3 Kosten Tyson cores, clocked at 2.15 GHz. Finally, the efficiency cores are a cluster of 4 clock ARM Cortex A510 cores. The clocking isn't really high due to concerns that the chipset may face great challenges with thermal and power management. But by far, the strategy seems relatively conservative. It didn't get heated up a lot and the battery life is performing at a normal level. 
The graphics are handled by the Meteor 910 GPU, clocked at 750MHz. The SoC also compresses newer versions of the DaVinci MPU, ISP, and Baron model. How powerful is the Huawei Mate 60 Pro's High Silicon Kirin 9000 chip? Based on benchmark tests, the High Silicon Kirin 9000S chipset falls behind the current gen Android champion, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. The SoC is capable of scoring around 700,000 points on N22, whereas on Geekbench, it can attain about 1,000 and 3,500 points in single-core and multi-core tests respectively. These scores put the performance of Kirin 9000S in the ballpark of Snapdragon 888. In other words, the chip is two generations behind the Android space. But are you really using your phone any differently more than you did two years ago? And I'm talking about flagship phones that were released two years ago. But still have to note that most third-party applications might haven't been optimized for the hyper-threading setup and the new GPU, and now it may have very limited boosts for heavy performance-consuming applications like games or even get some errors. For example, in Genshin Impact, the graphics would be displayed incorrectly. Well, there's still a lot of work to do in the following software updates. But also remember that the official launch hasn't taken place yet, everything is still on the road. The surprise is the standby power consumption. As we rested overnight, the battery curve was almost flat during the 12 hours, and it only consumed 1% of the power. As I mentioned at the beginning, the Huawei Mate 60 Pro is the first Huawei 5G smartphone in nearly 3 years. High Silicon Kirin 9000's newly developed Baron model enables support for 5th generation mobile communication technology on the phone. Unfortunately, not much is known about this mysterious model. In the hands-on video, we also tested the actual 5G network performance on the phone. You can check that video for more information. But please note that we tested it for times and got it compared with other 4G and 5G phones. The carrier here limits the full potential of their 5G connection, but we found it is even better than some 5G phones and got twice the speed of 4G models. Anyway, in addition to 5G, the device also supports satellite connectivity. In fact, the Huawei Mate 60 Pro is the world's first commercial smartphone to support satellite calling. The Mate 50 Pro was limited to text, like the iPhone 14 lineup. I've used the traditional bulky satellite phones at times, so it's truly put it into such a compact body. In next video about the phone, we will run out into the field, simulate the absence of any mobile network, and test how it completes satellite calls. Please keep subscribing and give us a like. Let us know you're interested. So just stay tuned. Thank you for watching. I'm Wei Huang from China. See you soon.